Okay, for this video, we're going to start using Stata for kind of exploring our data. We're going to start using Stata to kind of understand the application of statistics and for teaching a few key points. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Stata on your computer. Now this is a Mac, so it may look a little different on yours. But you'll need to find your actual application and click on Stata and open it up. Now, my version of Stata looks a little bit different than yours likely will. I'm running Stata 14.2, but the reason why mine looks different is because on my preferences, under general preferences, I tend to prefer to use the classic color scheme rather than the standard color scheme because I guess I like the old school way. It also seems easier on my eyes and I just like how it looks. So if you want to change your preferences, you can. Um, it will copy and paste to like Microsoft Word or anything else uh, just the same. So with using Stata, you need to have your, your Stata files, your data files ready to be able to open as a Stata file or have data that are in something like Microsoft Excel and you can copy and paste it in. There's a large data set, copying and pasting may not be uh, the best way to do it. Um, if you've got it as a Stata file, which I will provide um, for at least this first task, um, you can open it up. This first Stata file I'm going to be using is called the uh, kind of big county health data set for Stata 11 that I had made for Stata 11. It still works um, in this version. You can go forward, but it's hard to take something that's a Stata 14 file and try to open it on Stata 11. But you can open Stata 11 files on Stata 14. So I've got it there. Now, when I open it up, I see these variable names all show up. So that means it's there, but if I want to visually look at it, I can either use the data editor or the data browser. The data editor browse function means that I pull it up, I can't, I can't do anything with it, I can't change it. If you've got a split screen or two monitors, you can kind of set the data on the side and still see it. Uh, so I can see it on my right screen. You can't see it. All right. Next, I can also do data editor. So if I open up data editor and change the edit mode, now I can actually change the numbers. I'm going to keep it at 12, but um, you could potentially have a keyboard nearby and make errant uh, strikes on your keys and mess things up. But... Uh, I usually don't do that. I tend to use editor a lot more than browse. So that's a little bit about viewing it. The nice thing about the data editor or browser is you can see the data are actually here. So this data set has a lot of data as I covered in a previous video. We have life expectancy data. I have calculated the percent change in life expectancy since 1980. So there was life expectancy data from uh, 1980, and then I also calculated the life expectancy, or not calculated it, but downloaded the life expectancy for 2014. This data set had also information on current smoking rates, as well as ever smoking rates. The red stuff is stuff that we cannot use as continuous data. It's treating it as text. You could potentially categorize it in some way, um, but uh, we won't be doing any of the red text stuff in here. So these data are county level data, so they're ecologic in nature. So just because we may see something at the county level does not necessarily mean it'll hold true at the individual level. So that's just a little introduction into seeing the data. You'll be able to download this information and uh, we'll just uh, do a little bit of playing around in Stata with it. So one of the first things that we talked about doing with Stata in our syllabus 
was just organizing and displaying data. So we may be interested in seeing our data visually. Now, if you're familiar with kind of statistics, we tend to think of things as whether or not they fit the normal distribution or whether they don't fit the normal distribution. So if you're interested in seeing whether something fits the normal distribution, you can kind of browse uh, your data you, and then you can see whether or not it fits a normal distribution. So I'm going to pull up a picture of what a normal distribution looks like. And we will look at a bar chart of a normal distribution here. So a normal distribution generally has this kind of bell curve shape. Sometimes the data will come in a bar chart form, so where the data come from a histogram. So I'll pull up a histogram that might fit close to a normal distribution. So just pull that one in there. This is a histogram that kind of has, actually has the bell curve normal distribution where the most frequent observation happens to be the measure of central tendency. That would be your average as well as your median. And this is also the most frequent observation, your, your mode as well. So when all those align, you've got a pretty close to normal distribution, if not a totally normal distribution. So how do our life expectancy data look? So I can actually go to graphics and type in or click histogram and we can look at the life expectancy data. Life expectancy 14, it was near the bottom of the list. I'm going to go back for you. So I want graphics, histogram, then I pick the life expectancy. Okay, and then I'm going to hit OK on it. These data are continuous. They include decimals. If you want to go back and browse, you could. You could see that. So it's doing the histogram, and here's kind of the shape of it. Not exactly a perfect bell curve. So that's kind of the shape of it. 0.15% of our observations or more kind of fit in each one of these bends. The most frequent observations are kind of right here at this level. Our median may be near that level. I don't know. We have to act, we can do some summary statistics to see. So if we're interested in getting our summary statistics, we can type in sum life expectancy 14, and that will give us our average and our standard deviation and our minimum and maximum. We may want more information than that, so we can type in sum life expectancy 14, and then I, did you notice I put a comma right after that and hit detail. When I do that, it's going to give me a lot more information, stuff that I'm probably going to care more about. It gives me the median, the middle value. It gives me the smallest five numbers. That, those are right here. It gives me the one, one percentile, the 25th percentile. So these values of 66, 67, 68.5, these are well below the one percentile and way way below the 50th percentile or the median and 20 years below the 99th percentile or our highest observations our average as you see is still 77.75 our mean when we did this in the same standard deviation but we also get other information about how skewed the data are you know they did skewed to the left skewed to the right and then this thing called kurtosis that describes, you know, the actual shape of the curve, how pointy it is or how flat it is. If you want to see 
the median for yourself, we can sort the data. And this will sort by typing sort, it will sort them from lowest to highest. And I can type in sort, and then I can click on the variable life expectancy, and it will sort the data for me. You see it? It just, I hit enter, and now I got this dot. It actually did it for us, though. If we go to data editor and look for our own eyes, and I scroll all the way over to the end to where life expectancy is. Here's life expectancy 14 right there. It has sorted them from lowest to highest. But then we can also see the lowest life expectancies, expectancies in the United States. A lot of them up at the uh, Native American reservation counties in South Dakota and North Dakota. And then we see Central Appalachia here in Kentucky and West Virginia. Um, and then we also see the Black Belt and then more Kentucky, a lot more Kentucky and Mississippi. So these are the counties with the lowest life expectancies in the United States. You can go all the way down to the bottom and get the counties with the highest life expectancies in the United States. And if you want the median, since they're ranked, it will be the middle value. So what is half of 3,135? So it's about 16, I don't know, 65, 1670. I can actually use this as a calculator by typing in display and then type in our total observations, 3,135, divide it by 2, and it says it's 1567.5. So I can actually go back to browse and go to 1567. And scroll down that will be about our midway point 1567 and it says it's 77.93 should be our median and there's our median our middle value when ranked from lowest to highest represents our median and it's pretty close to our average so generally when your average and your median are really close many times you've got something that's suggestive of more of a normal distribution. Generally speaking, larger samples, you know, when you have 3,000 observations or more, they generally approach normality, but they still may fail some of the different normality tests. If we want to see how well our data fit the bell curve, and we focus so much on the bell curve and the normal distribution because a lot of statistical tests assume the data are behaving or are, are uh, modeled after or act like there is a, a normal distribution, when in fact that may not always be the case. The data may not behave like a normal distribution in life. They may not follow a bell curve. If we want to see if our data fit the bell curve, we can straighten out the line and do what's called a QQ plot. And uh, I'm trying to remember the exact, the exact command for that. It's been a little while. And I believe it's, so it's, uh, it's Q norm. Q norm. And then I'll do life expectancy. And then we can see we have a few counties here that are clearly below the normal distribution line and a few counties that are clearly off the line and then different uh, tails here and there. There's a few different statistical tests that we can use to test normality and uh, we'll go into those here in a little bit. But uh, for this first part, you at least have an idea of being able to uh, do a histogram on life expectancy we can type in those commands. I can do a histogram on ever smoking for the United States. We can do a histogram on current smoking for the United States. I'll run that now. We see a pretty bell curve shaped distribution. We can do summary statistics on current smoking. I can actually click on the variable and hit detail. And we can see the average is 25.06, the median is 25.3. So that's where we'll stop for this first video.